This is an ABC News special report. Good morning. I'm Whit Johnson in New York, and we're coming on the air right now because there has been a major ruling in Georgia's election interference case against Donald Trump and 14 other co-defendants. Judge Scott McAfee has just ruled Fulton County District Attorney Fonnie Willis can remain on the case. So let's get right to our senior investigative correspondent, Aaron Katursky, because Aaron, the way the judge laid this out here, there are multiple options to work with. There are with because he did not totally clear the district attorney here in Fulton County from the whiff of impropriety, but he said Donald Trump and some of his co-defendants failed to show that there was an actual conflict of interest posed by her relationship with another member of the prosecution team, Nathan Wade, whom she hired to help run the case. But he did say there was an appearance of impropriety. And so while disqualification was not necessary, the judge did give options. The de decision says the district attorney may choose to step aside along with the entirety of her office or she can let Nathan Wade go and the case can continue. So with the ball is now in Fonnie Willis's court to decide how to proceed. All right, Aaron, stand by. Let's bring in Olivia Rubin, our investigative reporter. And Olivia, I know you've been following this closely. Of course, the appearance of impropriety, this is exactly what Trump's attorneys and the attorneys of the other co-defendants were trying to lay out. It's exactly what Donald Trump's attorney, Steve Sadow, and many of the other defense attorneys told the judge should be enough to remove her from the case. They said that there is enough in Georgia law that should mean that an appearance of a conflict should get her kicked off. But that is exactly what the DA argued against, telling the judge immediately after we saw all of those, you know, high stakes evidentiary hearings, saying that there is no case law that just an appearance of conflict should lead to a disqualification and urge the judge really, really in this, I, I think it was a 17 page filing saying there must be an actual conflict of interest. And as we just heard from Aaron, the judge ultimately found that there was no actual conflict of interest, that the trips that they took together, that the money that was paid by Nathan Wheat's card, remember Fonnie Willis said she paid that back in cash, that she had no financial benefit, and that should dispel any idea that she had a financial stake in keeping the case going. So when the judge heard that, it seems that that seemed to dispel any notion that she uh, had any sort of personal stake here. And I think it's likely that we're going to hear from the DA that this is a win for her case. I think it's not, uh, you know, the worst outcome that Nathan Wade, which is likely the option that they're going to choose, is going to have to step aside because the case will continue forward. Fonnie Willis can continue forward, and it does not have to get tied up now by this outside body having to pick an entirely new team to come in and pick up the case, probably delaying it indefinitely. So that has been avoided today if they take the option of Nathan Wade with. And of course, the attorneys for Trump and the co-defendants were actually seeking to disqualify Willis. Um, so now we have these options to work with. Let's bring in Chris Timmons, our ABC News legal contributor, former Georgia prosecutor. And Chris, so, so where does Fonnie Willis go from here in making this decision? I mean, I think it's a no brainer. I think Nathan Wade, you know, uh, resigns. I think he uh, files some sort of document that says that in the best interest of the case, he's not moving forward with the case. He's going to he's going to step down. Now, Fonnie Willis is somebody who's is a little bit of a maverick. She's somebody who you know, kind of forges her own path. So there is a slight possibility that she decides to challenge this ruling. But if she's smart and she is very smart, she'll let Nathan Wade step aside and she'll continue with the rest of the office. They've got a deep bench in Fulton County. They've got plenty of prosecutors who are capable of stepping into his shoes. She could bring in another special prosecutor, but this looks like a win for the state, just as Olivia said, Whit. All right, so let's bring in uh, Brian Buckmeyer, our legal contributor and trial attorney. And Brian, just looking at this if you, from the Trump and the co-defendants perspective, um, what is the perception of all this do? And is there more opportunity for delay, which is what they want? Yeah, well, wait, I think there is a, a good perception here that while it ultimately is a win for the prosecution here, the judge did give them a bit of an olive branch to say the appearance of impropriety or conflict did seem to exist. And it might create an opportunity for them to appeal and say, you know what? The judge made an incorrect stance of applying the wrong standard, the standard of being actual um, conflict rather than the appearance of it. And they can ask a higher court to evaluate this case and take the judge's 
ultimate finding of an appearance of conflict and say that should have been the ruling, take his understanding of what the evidence was and come to a different conclusion, and that could create a further delay. Uh, Brian, thank you so much. Let's go back to Aaron Katursky because, Aaron, I know you're sort of digging into this, um, this decision from the judge here. And what more did the judge say about this appearance of impropriety? Yeah, Whit, even though Fonnie Willis is allowed to stay on the case if she gets rid of Nathan Wade as a special prosecutor, the decision is really unkind to her. The judge writing that an outsider could reasonably think that the district attorney is not exercising her independent professional judgment totally free of any compromising influences. And also left unresolved, the judge said, is the issue of when her romantic relationship with Nathan Wade started. The defense attorneys believed she hired her boyfriend, that they were dating before she brought Wade onto the prosecution team. She denied that pretty forcefully, but still the judge's decision said neither side was able to conclusively establish a preponderance of the evidence when the relationship evolved into a romantic one. However, with the decision says, an odor of mendacity remains, meaning he seems to doubt whether Fonnie Willis and Nathan Wade were being fully truthful in their testimony. All right, Aaron Katursky, thank you. Let's go back to Olivia Rubin. Olivia, I understand you're getting more reaction to this. Mm -hmm, we are. I'm just texting right now with a couple sources down there, Whit, and there's one on the defense side who is already starting to hint at an appeal for this ruling. Um, the initial reaction is saying they feel that the judge, quote, bent over backwards to protect the DA with this ruling. Of course, not necessarily any evidence of that in the actual ruling, but that is the sentiment on the side of the defendants here who fought for two months as part of this effort to get the district attorney disqualified and already hinting at an appeal saying we will need to wait and see what the appellate court chooses to decide, which of course Whit will kick off another sort of entire uh, legal issue as part of this effort. And as I'm sure Chris Timmons will tell you, you know, there is a question about what happens to the case on appeal. Does it get stayed again, which could feed right back into Donald Trump's goal of this case, which is to delay, delay, delay. So already talk of an appeal on the ground in Georgia just moments after this ruling hit with. Olivia, thanks so much. Let's bring in John Santucci, our executive editorial producer. And John, as Olivia pointed to there, of course, the timing is the big question here. We are in an election year. Yep. Former President Donald Trump is now the Republican nominee. And all four of these criminal cases now dealing with delays, possibly. Yeah, you really can't make this story line up if you tried, Witt. It's remarkable. Every case Donald Trump faces right now, the news just yesterday, the prosecutors in Manhattan are now looking for a 30-day delay in that case. That was supposed to begin later this month on March 25th. But now in Fulton County, and Witt, I know Olivia has spoken to several sources and defense attorneys. I've spoken to attorneys for former President Donald Trump. They are reading this ruling right Right now, and I can tell you it that as Olivia just reported, the same for Team Trump. They are looking at ways to appeal this case because look. If Nathan Wade steps aside, as this ruling from Judge McAfee says, the case can go on. That is not what Team Trump or any of the other 19 de total defendants wanted here. They want this to go away. So how do they get this to go away? They have an appeal. Look at another case right now, just for our viewers at home and stay with me. If we head to the federal cases right now, look at what Team Trump has been successful doing in the January 6 efforts to overturn the election case brought by special counsel Jack Smith. They have delayed that case by appealing it to the U.S. Supreme Court. So here in Georgia, obviously we're at a state level. The goal for Team Trump, get this to the Georgia State Court of Appeals, get another delay because at the moment, though there is no trial date set in stone in Georgia, with the proposed date is August. That is terribly close for Team Trump to November. John Santucci, our thanks to you and the entire team on this. Again, the breaking news right now, a Georgia judge ruling D.A. Fonnie Willis can remain on that case out of Georgia. Uh, for now, we do want to return you to regular programming for some people in some parts of the country. That's Good Morning America. Of course, our coverage continues on ABC News Live and ABCNews.com. And I'll be right back with the entire team for World News Tonight. For now, I'm Wade Johnson in New York. Have a great day. This has been a special report from ABC News.